Hey everyone, Legend here, and today I'm going to talk about the 2022 version of Hollow Scream at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay. Now this is of course the park's big adult Halloween event with haunted houses and scare zones and shows. It is an extra ticketed event in the evening, so if you have an annual pass or a fun card, it won't get you into the event, but you got to buy a ticket. It's not too expensive, like tickets for this event run around $45 to $60, so not too bad for an event, especially for what you get at Hollow Scream here. Let's begin uh, the tour with talking about the main attraction at Hollow Scream, and that is the haunted houses. This year there are five different haunted houses. The first one you get to right in the front of the park, in between the Zagora Cafe and the alligator enclosure, is Death Water Bayou Blood Moon The Final Phase. Now Death Water Bayou is a house that's been at Busch Gardens for a very, very long time. But this year it is going to be a little bit different than in years past. I mean, years past it's really been more of a, a voodoo and a New Orleans themed haunted house. This year it is a werewolf haunted house. And unfortunately I don't think it's a change for the better. I think this was a stronger house in years past. Um, also it's been at the event for a very long time. The title this year has Blood Moon the Final Phase in it, so maybe it's the last year for Death Water Bayou. Uh, a classic at the event, but I think it's time for it to go. Um, some solid stuff, a lot of people dressed as werewolves. New for 2022 is Stranglewood Estate. That is quite the name. Now, this haunted house is in the old Questor building right across the way from the Giraffe Bar and Cheetah Hunt, and it's pretty much a, a haunted house. It's like a big manor with a whole bunch of spooky stuff inside. Uh, it's a very well done haunted house. Lots and lots of scare actors in there. The sets are well done. Not overly memorable as it's very much a, a haunted house of a haunted house, but it is a uh, top notch, one of the better ones at the event. Moving on to what was unfortunately my least favorite one at the event is Witch of the Woods. Now this haunted house is going to be over by the kangaroos and it is, it's just okay. I will say it's a very long haunted house. It's got an outdoor portion and an indoor portion, which is pretty neat. But I, I think when you made it that long, you had to kind of stretch the budget and it, it stretched the budget a little bit thin. Uh, there were a couple cool scenes in the interior, like there's a, a two story house at one point with somebody on the second level, but this one I felt like it had a lot of rooms with just nothing going on. You go through like room after room after room with no scare actors. And yes, it's probably a good five or six minute long haunted house, but the, the scares are kind of few and far between. And the sets, they felt very much like you would see at a, any old regional park haunted house. Over by Tigris, you'll find The Forgotten, which is a vampire-themed haunted house. Uh, kind of like a vampire nightclub. If you remember, like, the opening scene of the original Blade, kind of felt a little bit like that. That was the vibe I was getting for it. Like this haunted house, a lot of big, cool sets in there. Um, some very theatrical scenes. I love this one with, like, the boss vampire, and he's, like, on a big neon throne. A uh, pretty cool haunted house there. Finishing it up, over by Sand Serpent, you'll get the residence home for the holidays. And this, my friends, this is the best haunted house at the entire event. What they did, they took their residence house, which they've had for a few years, and they did it up as a Christmas-themed haunted house. And it is so fantastic. Christmas music, Christmas smells, Christmas scenes, Christmas decoration, absolutely everywhere. This haunted house killed it. Uh, by far my favorite thing at the event this year. One of the best haunted houses I've ever seen at Busch Gardens Tampa. If you're going to Hollow Scream, do not miss this. There's like a scene with like a disheveled, sad Santa who's eating pizza and drinking a Modelo. It is just, it's a very creative house. There's like uh, elf on the shelf inside of somebody's body. Uh, so, you know, uh, as with the Halloween event, it's going to be a little bit on the, the grotesque side. But man, don't miss that one. Awesome. I would say it, it might even be worth the price of admission alone to go through this awesome Christmas-themed haunted house. Up next, let's talk a little bit about the scare zones. I believe there are eight different scare zones this year at Hollow Scream. There are two new ones, including Beyond the Veil, which Molly told me is a chapter in the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix book. Well, here they do hold wands in the, <laughs> in the scare zone. It's kind of like pixies and goblins and that kind of mythical creatures, but the scare zone's got some pretty cool sets. The costumes are really well done, and I like that one quite a bit. The other new one is also fantastic. Raven's Mill, and this is located sort of behind the smokehouse on that big pathway over there. And uh, they, they spent a lot, a lot of money on this scare zone. Pumpkins and scarecrow people, chainsaws, and they even went, they built an entire windmill just for the scare zone. Really well done. You've got Voodoo over by the Animal Connections building, which is a New Orleans kind of themed haunt. Um, a lot of scare actors in there. The scare actors in this zone seemed like they were loving their job. As you think, you know, I was there on opening night, so you think you, you better be loving your job on opening night or else it's going to be a pretty long season for you. And uh, Voodoo is a good zone. They do have like a uh, giant, like 15 foot tall 
uh, kind of statue of a voodoo doll with another voodoo doll, and that was neat. Uh, right nearby that, by the elephants, is the shortcut, which kind of like a graveyard-themed scare zone. Um, some big sets in there, so that was pretty solid. Uh, in the back of the park over by Kumba, you'll find Crash Test Clowns with the Wacky Waving Arm Inflatable Flailing Tube Men. And uh, this zone's fun. Uh, small zone, but obviously this is going to be your clown zone. And uh, it's neat. It's well done. I love the, the Wacky Waving Arm Inflatable Flailing Tube Men. And something that Bush Gardens always does, and this year is no different. They take some scare actor clowns and they just put them on the bumper cars. So you could ride the bumper cars and get bumped by an evil clown. Pretty neat. Over by Jingala, you got Skeleton Crew, and this is going to be the pirate-themed scare zone. Uh, pretty neat in here. They got some cool laser effects, and there's like a giant, like, awesome stone sculpture of a massive kraken-type octopus. That's uh, That was pretty well done back there. And then the final scare zone is over by Sesame Street, and this is In the Shadows. And that one, it's a very dark scare zone, a very kind of creepy scare zone. There are four different shows at Hollow Scream this year, which is pretty impressive. That's something I don't think they've ever done at the event. I know in the years past they've had like one show, and this year they've got four. So you could definitely tell they, they've upped the budget of Hollow Scream, especially in the entertainment area. And the first show is Fiends. Now this takes place in the Guazi Park area, and this is your big, giant, dancing, spectacular kind of show. I mean, it's, it's okay. They had a nice set this year. This is, I think, the best set I've seen for a Fiends show. This is your big, like, dancing and comedy show. I will say the dancing... Pretty well done, like some good stuff there. There's a great segment with the mummy character who does break dancing and trampoline dancing. That's really fun. As far as the comedy goes, well, uh, not not the best there. For like every one joke that would hit, there'll be five or six that just completely falls flat to an audience of about a thousand people. So, you know, I was there on opening night. I saw the first show. Obviously, they'll probably work out their material and hopefully it'll get better as it goes along. New this year is 5050, which is a fake game show kind of thing in the big Coca-Cola tent right by the Bird Gardens. And this one, uh, good to see them doing some new and creative shows, but this one didn't really work. It was kind of like a, a fake game show with monsters, but uh, yeah, it, it was not, not so hot. In the back of the park in Stanleyville, they do have something called Circus Extreme, or Xcream, I'm sorry. And uh, this was not running on opening weekend, but it's going to be like your acrobat kind of show. Weird that it wasn't running open at weekend. And then in the Dragonfire Grill, they've got the Rolling Bones, which is just kind of like a cover band. But still, like, if the, it's raining at the event, or you want to, you know, just sit down, get some air conditioning, enjoy a beverage, and listen to some music, pretty good option there. Of course, one great thing about Hollow Scream is that the rides are open. Not every ride in the park, but pretty much all of the adult rides. And you get to get some night rides on the roller coasters, like night rides on Cheetah Hunt, Kumba, Montu, Iron Gwazi, especially Iron Gwazi. Like, that is, for me, one of the best roller coasters in the entire world. And you get to ride it at night. They've got a great lighting package on it, so obviously don't miss Iron Gwazi. Now, if you're like me and you love animals at Bush Gardens, Tampa, Hollow Scream, not the time to see the animals. Most of them go inside for the night. But like these elephants here, if they don't want to go inside, they'll just hang out and watch the scare actors. So it's kind of fun to walk you by like, oh, the elephants are still out. And there we go. That'll do it for Hollow Scream 2022 at Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay. Uh, full disclosure, we were there for VIP night, so we did not pay for these tickets. But I had fun. I think it's a, for like $45 or $60, it's a pretty solid event. Um, if you're only going to one haunted house event in Central Florida, I would say definitely go to Halloween Horror Nights, as that's, you know, 10 haunted houses and 10 all-new haunted houses. But I think Hollow Scream over in Tampa, pretty solid option there. I will say, I don't think the haunted houses were quite as scary this year as they were in years past. And I don't know if that's actually, like me being desensitized, as I've now been through, you know, hundreds and hundreds of haunted houses, or if they kind of took the scare levels down a little bit, or they're learning the ropes since I was there on opening night. Love the increased budget in the scare zones and uh, doing more entertainment. That's fantastic. If you got any questions about Hollow Scream, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching.